Hello, my name is Rian Blom with Avaya Global Support. In this video we will see how to restart the Avaya multi-application platform for Divinity, also commonly known as the MAPD. I will be going through two different methods of restarting the MAPD. First I will show you how to perform a software restart, followed by a demonstration on how to perform a hardware restart. Let's start by looking at the MAPD software restart. To perform this task, I'll be using a utility called PuTTY, which can be downloaded from the web. When you select the Telnet option in PuTTY, it should automatically change the port number for you to port 23. Next, you will need to enter the IP address of your MAPD. The address provided here is just an example. Then, click on Open to start the connection. At the login prompt, type your username. This might be CUST or another account. For Avaya services, it will be CRAFT or another higher level username and password. When prompted for a terminal type, you can choose an appropriate terminal type for the application that you are using. In my case, I'm using VT100. This should place you at the main menu for the MAPD operation, administration and maintenance screens. To restart the MAPD, we need to move down to option number 4, Maintenance. Next, from the Maintenance menu, choose option number 3, Reset System. On the Reset System menu, we are going to choose option number 2, to reboot the system. Please take note of this warning. It is very important that you perform this work during a customer approved change control window as restarting the MAPD will take all the CTI links connected through this MAPD out of service. If you are certain you have permission to proceed, then choose Yes. If not, choose No and contact the customer for permission. It should take anywhere between 2 to 5 minutes for the MAPD to shut down and boot back up. Next we will look at doing a hardware restart of the MAPD. To locate the MAPD, you need to find the correct cabinet that is housing the MAPD assembly. In our case, it's housed in a G650 cabinet. You can identify the MAPD easily since it is much wider than the other circuit packs. It will take up three slots rather than one. It also has a little LCD screen on the front that provides status of the board. You could see the amount of MAPD links connected to the CM depending on what state the MAPD is currently in. Below that you can see the boot shut button and directly below that the PCMCIA slots used for backup and upgrades. Please pay attention to the warning regarding using electrostatic discharge protection when inserting or removing the MAPD. At the bottom of the faceplate you can see there are instructions for powering down the MAPD. You need to press the boot shut button until M shut is flashing. Then wait until M shut is steady before removing the MAPD. To the right of that on the clip you can see the MAPD model number and vintage. I would like to repeat that you need to ensure that you have an approved change control window with the customer as resetting the MAPD will interrupt all CTI links connected through it. Once you have the MAPD identified then you can proceed with shutting it down. Press the boot shut button. Once the button is pressed, you should see a flashing M shut on the LCD on the front of the MAPD. This indicates that the MAPD is performing a graceful shutdown. Once M shut remains solid, it is safe to remove the MAPD assembly from the cabinet. Once again, prior to doing this, please ensure that you are wearing the proper electrostatic discharge protection so you do not damage the board. You only need to pull the board out 2 to 3 inches. Since it is essentially a computer on its own, 
we leave it out of the cabinet for between 30 to 60 seconds before inserting it back into the cabinet. When inserting the board back into the cabinet, make sure that you do not force the board. There are hundreds of small pins on the back plane of the cabinet which could get bent if too much force is used. Carefully slide the board back into position, close the clip and monitor the boot sequence on the LCD display. The different stages that the MAPD goes through during a boot process is also documented in the MAPD Implementation and Maintenance Guide. If there are no links configured or no clients connected to the MAPD, then it will only boot to an A init stage. On our MAPD, we have two CVLAN links configured, and since the MAPD brings those into service, whether there is a client or not, it boots through to showing ASAI-2 on the LCD display. Let's check the status of the CTI links following the restart. Log back into the MAPD as before using PuTTY and Telnet. From the main menu, I'm going to select menu option number 6 for CVLAN port status and control since my MAPD only has CVLAN links configured. From the CVLAN status and control page, I can check whether the Definity port state is up. In this case it's not since there are no clients or third-party applications connected yet. I can see the CVLAN service status on the MAPD is in service. There are no clients connected yet, but we can see there have been some messages passed to and from the Definity or Communication Manager. These would be heartbeat messages that the MAPD uses to maintain the CVLAN links. Let's check the Communication Manager for the status of the CTI links. From the Communication Manager System Administration Terminal or SAT Terminal, type the command list configuration all and locate the MAPD board. You can see our board is showing up here in slots 01A11 through 01A13 and that ports 4 and 5 have been configured. You can also use the command list CTI and search for the MAPD configured CTI links. As you can see, CTI link 13 and 14 have physical ports against them and they match the MAPD board location. Next you can use the command status BRI port and the port number of one of your CTI links to bring up a page that shows current status of that port. Here you want to look at the service state, whether it is maintenance busy and the layer 1 state. Since my link does not have any third party applications connected to the MAPD yet, it is showing that layer 2 state is restarting. That's ok, we are waiting for the third party application to connect. That concludes the video on how to restart the Avaya multi-application platform for Definity. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.